Okay. So, um, take care of this. A little bookkeeping. I hope everybody as well. It's been a long time since I've done it live. Uh, yeah. So, let's see how many people are going to jump on. All right, how are we doing? Hello, Osama. How are you? Hope everything is well. Good. Welcome to the stream. Hey, greetings, greetings, greetings. Ah, yeah, yeah, there we go. All right. So I figured I'd drop, drop in, do a quick live on this subject. I get a lot of questions put to me. So I'm going to start accepting more and more questions from you guys. So if you have any questions, post them under videos. Maybe start with a big, uh, put Q, put, you know, when you leave a comment in YouTube or on Instagram or something, just put question and, and put it as a subject. and Maybe we'll cover it in a live. Hope everybody is well. Welcome to the stream. Um, yeah. All right. So you know, people are just still getting on. So I'm just going to give a few minutes for people to get on. If you're watching a replay of the stream, just uh, I'll try to put a link in the top comment and in the description when the actual uh, main discussion starts so that the live audience can uh, get in. So I hope everybody is well. So first of all, hello, Jeremy. Polong. Hello, 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 hey there, how are you doing? It's been a long, long time since I've done a live. I hope everything is well with you guys. So, there we go. All right. So, we'll do the, us we'll do, um, the usual thing. I'll cover the subject, and then I will do a little Q&A. <laughs> hey, 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 hope everybody is well. All right, so let me just... Uh, quickly jump into it. So I've been, um, I got a question to me, uh, I got, a, excuse me, I got a question put to me recently with regards to um, all the legacy code that's out there. A lot of Java, a lot of C Sharp, a lot of C++, a lot of PHP, a lot of JavaScript, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, the larger implications is what does this mean? This means that there's tremendous number of jobs related to these legacy uh, languages and implementations. In other words, a lot of companies out there have spent a lot of money developing applications with these technologies that have been around for 10, 20, 30 years or more, and they're not going to just burn everything down because of some hot new language. Uh, one of the things I've been talking about for a long time on this channel is that when it comes to uh, development in the real world, it's uh, you have to always consider business realities, and the reality is it's a painful lesson. Well, it was kind of a painful lesson, but it became a good lesson. But I learned way back in the day, if a company has invested a certain amount of money in a particular technology, say Java or C Sharp .Net, they're not going to be wanting to change and drop that uh, code base because of some new technology or framework that came out. Very rarely, very rarely, they will do so on occasion maybe on new projects, but generally speaking, if they're maintaining old uh, code bases, they won't. That's why today you still see so many jobs in these old legacy languages, right? Not so much in the new stuff, with some exceptions rare here and there. So if you look at any job indexes and so forth, you see the usual cast of characters at our top, you know, the web stack, the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Python, PHP, Java, C Sharp, and then outside of that area, then you get the C++ and the C, uh, SQL, relational database work. This is what's all too common. You know, the good thing, you know, about um, all of this is that a lot of these languages call, come from the same basic family of languages. So once you learn how to program in C or C++ or Java, JavaScript, uh, PHP, you, you pretty much know how to program in all the different languages. They're very, very similar in many respects. So there you go. So that's the, uh, the short answer to all this legacy Java code and C++ code and C Sharp code that's sitting around out there. It means a lot of jobs. Even today, you'll find uh, a lot of uh, legacy COBOL stuff out there, uh, which is the mainframe language. This is stuff, you know, it goes back, what is it, 70s, I guess? 
there's still a lot of there's still COBOL jobs out there. Yeah, there's a lot less of those than say Java jobs or maybe JavaScript jobs, but there's a lot fewer COBOL programmers. So you always have to compare the number of jobs versus the number of programmers. And sometimes you can find yourself in a highly lucrative market where, yeah, there, are, there might be only 100 COBOL jobs, but there's only 50 COBOL programmers out there, or 25, and there's a lot of activity there for you in terms of work. Now, I'm not saying go learn COBOL. I'm just using that as an example. So there you go. Um, that's in a nutshell. I just wanted to cover that topic quickly. So that if somebody is watching the replay, they, uh, you know, they don't have to wait 40 minutes. So that being said, I'll jump into some of the live action here and I'll answer any questions that come up, time permitting. Hey, Matthew, how are you, man? Great to see you. Welcome. Uh, code long and prosper. That's the official motto of this, uh, I don't know, expression, um, catchphrase of this station this live uh when to use laravel instead of wordpress thanks for your advice use wordpress when you want to do set up blog sites or information rich rich sites uh if you want to do anything very custom then you use laravel you could use laravel to build wordpress uh, but you can't use wordpress to build laravel uh, so it's just a question you know if you have a very narrow f information focused site uh you know again blog-based, uh, article-based site with multiple contributors, then definitely WordPress. That's when you would use a content management system. No question about that. Uh, hello, hello. How are you? Yeah, if you liked th this stream, please do give me a like. It's uh, good for the Google algorithms. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there you have it. So um, what was the other point I want to bring out? Yeah, so that's it. I covered the main topic. And just to recap, all this legacy code has a huge, huge impact in terms of the jobs that are out there. You're going to be running into a lot of legacy jobs. I, I know a lot of people new to the programming game, they're actually very surprised when they get out there and they realize, oh my God, there's tons of C-sharp jobs. There's tons of Java jobs, tons of JavaScript jobs, tons of PHP jobs, all these old technologies. When you're looking at technologies, by the way, you know, back in the 90s, and I would argue the early 2000s, you had to be concerned about what you were coding in because things were evolving so quickly. Like, for example, uh, the differences between the versions of HTML were pretty dr dramatic. When they went from X, from HTML4, to, uh, from X, excuse me, when they went from HTML4 and web design in, in the 4.0 stage, and they went to XHTML, it was pretty significant. When they went from table-based layout to CSS-based layout, very significant. Uh, when they started implementing Ajax-based uh, web apps, uh, very significant uh, versus traditional uh, page-only model. So uh, those uh, dramatic changes, though, have largely, they've, it's happened, it's done. We reached plateau in terms of development for the most part, um, since I say about 2014, 2012, give or take a couple of years, it hasn't changed that much. Uh, just v new variants on the same old themes. So, yeah, so I wouldn't be so concerned about that uh, in terms of, you know, having to always be on top of what's the latest and greatest tech. Most of the jobs, the vast majority are involving older technologies. That's just a fact of the matter in this whole thing. Ah, uh, let's go. Roger, what are your thoughts on IT companies hiring Indians for below market salaries? How are local programmers supposed to make a living when government are importing countless immigrants to work on the cheap? Well, um, you do get some outsourcing, but uh, the fact of the matter is every statistic I've seen, there's just, there's just a glut of jobs and not enough programmers. That's why they're clamoring to bring in uh, IT professionals from overseas, uh, they'll try to outsource if they can, just because there's just not enough supply. So I wouldn't be so concerned about that. If you're a good coder and you have great communication skills, you'll find high-valued work. Look at the statistic. I pulled out a stat in an er early video, uh, well, recent video, rather, and it's showing that the average developer in uh, the U.S. makes over 100,000 U.S., the average the average entry-level developer makes in the 90 range. 
So uh, they're paying good money still for developers. Imagine, there's no other profession with just a little bit of training, a year of a couple a year or two of experience, you can start making ninety grand plus uh, a year. Uh, it's, it's, it is the, the easiest and quickest way to making good money. Then when you start making good money, then you start learning how to manage your money so you can find yourself economically free in a short period of time. That's why I did my little money course. Links below. Anyway, Info Create says, "Why did you stop coding? Aren't there endless things you want to develop?" I stopped actively coding and went into architecture management because I couldn't build these things on my own. I needed a team. So I couldn't manage a team and manage a project and a business as I was coding at the same time. Because when you're coding, as you know, it's very focused, uh, isolating work, right? It's like writing a book. And it's, you're very focused and that's all you can do. But when you are managing a team or managing a project or a business, you have to have much more of a wider uh, psychology, if you are, a wider outlook. So I couldn't go, I tried. I couldn't go myopic, highly focused in code, and then pull back out and think about the business implications. I've done that for a little bit, but ultimately, if you want to build a business, you have to do one or the other. You can't do both. It's just a time thing. So, and so, you know, even though it's hard, hard to find good programmers, it's much harder to find somebody to uh, has a, a corporate vision, if you will, or architectural ability. I am thinking about going down the TypeScript rabbit hole to fix my issues I have with JavaScript. Well, if you want. Uh, lots of people have written a lot of JavaScript, and it does very well. Hey, it's Kevin from Florida. How are you, man? I hope everything is good with you. Uh I work as a developer for SIP Void Sup stuff. I hate it. When I was without a job and building what I found interesting, it was better but was broke. Your thoughts on cloud deploying sites in containers is it better than using Heroku or HostGator? Ah, that's a good question. It depends on the needs of your particular project, you know. Um, for most websites, most web apps, you know, basic hosting will be more than enough, HostGator or whatnot. Um, for Studio Web, we use a hybrid solution. So we use a fully managed virtual private server. Uh, so we can automatically scale it, click one button, automatic backups, automatic um, uh, restores, uh, all kinds. Of, they, they take care of everything. So it's kind of a, it's a fully managed solution. Um, and it, so we have all the advantages of managed hosting on the host gator, I suppose, and all the advantages of cloud hosting with all the, uh, auto scaling capabilities and so forth. I think that's the future of hosting, by the way, that being said, you know, so many people, when they get into the game, they all think they they need to uh, strategize for building the next Facebook. 99.9999% of you are not going to build sites that come even close to that scale. These are such rare, rare projects, so I wouldn't care too much about that. The number one thing I look for... Uh, yeah, sorry, a little message came through. The number one thing I look for in... Um, what was I talking about? In hosting is support support the whole the support is key for everything so if you have good support uh you can call their tech support line and they're going to give you an answer uh, then you have a good hosting company that's the that's the thing so before i buy hosting i just call up their support say hey do they answer or check do their live chat do they answer uh that's the first thing i do when i look at hosting uh, all right thanks for joining the stream everybody if you don't know who i am i'm uncle steph I'm the world's oldest developer on YouTube, 169 years old. And I, uh, yeah. So if you like this stream, please do give it a thumbs up. It's good for the Google algorithms. Uh, what is your take on using Django versus with Flutter versus Dart with Flutter in terms of scalability? You know, I've never done scale test uh, with either. So I couldn't say. Um, I would imagine... Uh, I would imagine Flutter can scale because I believe Google uses Flutter for their own um, 
applications, which they must have huge scale. So I think you're probably good with both. Um, again, my general feeling about all the modern uh, frameworks and libraries is that they're all going to scale fra fairly well these days. Why? Because A, servers are so powerful to begin with. Uh, all these technologies, whether it be Flutter, or Django, or Laravel, or uh, .NET, whatever, uh, Spring, they all are fairly efficient these days relative to 10 years ago. And so they can handle a huge number of, uh, amount of scale. Uh, uh, sure. Hold on, I'm just going to answer this. Very professional stream. Sure. Yeah, all right. So sorry about that. So that's my, okay, that was to answer Scott's question with regards to Django. There you go. Sorry about that. Um, Cody says, what's the biggest challenge you ever had to overcome during your career? Ooh. Challenge in... Uh, you know, it, it, it depends. I've had a long career. It depends on the circumstances. Um, with, um, who's, everybody's binging me here. Yeah, with, um, on the financial end of things, you know, it, it depends. Okay, let's talk about code. On coding, Nothing really big, really, because if you break down a problem, you can break, you can sort of break down almost anything. I'm trying to find an answer here. I think the biggest problem I had in recent memory was trying to figure out um, the use case for Studio Web. That was, I think, the biggest issue. Um, as I've talked about in other, sh other streams and other videos, uh, figuring out, having domain knowledge is a key to success with a lot of web apps and applications. So when I was developing the Studio Web application, there's a lot of stuff in Studio Web that you don't see because a lot of tools are there built for teachers and built for um, the school administration. There's a lot of stuff you won't see unless you're a teacher or administrator. So I'm going to put this phone on silent. I'm getting all these pings. Um, so that was an interesting conundrum, trying to figure that out, what people wanted, what teachers needed, what schools needed. Um, that's why we had uh, several versions of Studio Web, many iterations. I think that, you know, figuring out the use case, that's the, that's the hard part. Software problems can always be resolved and solved, you know, as you, uh, as you just, uh, break down as a situation. Uh, okay. Let's see, Jeremy, I'm a security engineer and recently started my journey in web programming, assuming I'm learning it to develop tools and apps independently, not tied to a company. Uh, I, uh, ah, yeah, I, that's it. You know, that's you hit the nail on the head, Jeremy. One of the things I talk about and why I, I teach coding with the web technologies, I could have taught coding with other uh, platforms, if you will, is that it offers you maximum flexibility in terms of careers and jobs, starting a business, freelancing, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas you get into security or maybe mobile development, those you, you're more likely you're going to have to find a work at a company, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm just saying it gives you a little bit more flexibility in that regard. Uh, I hear Ruby was good for app development. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Are the pro courses party are of the mentorship program? I looked at the HTML and it does look like it's, it is not. It's no problem if it isn't. Also, when the Ruby course coming on, why Latin first? <laughs> um, yeah, all the pro courses, when I finally release them, I wrote them out. I just I got to just edit them and get them out. I just been preoccupied. It's going to be part of the mentoring program. All my new material, all my current material, they're all included in the mentoring program. You have access for life. Basically, you buy the mentoring program, you get lifetime access to all my premium content. So yes, it, it is coming out. Uh, that being said, uh, the pro courses are, are, are updates to what I currently have, some little additions and some more um, advanced discussions vis-a-vis -vis the language as it relates to work and industry and so forth. 
little bit more advanced discussions in there. But uh, yeah, a lot of companies in Europe require GraphQL. I think this technology has a brilliant future. Do you think I sh we should invest time in learning it? Only learn it if you find that there's a job you want to get using it. You know, you see the thing about tech with so many, there's so many different technologies out there. GraphQL, uh, you know, data, Oracle databases, MySQL, Python, and, uh, and then you got TensorFlow and JavaScript and uh, you could go on and I'm all over the place, all over the place, Express, Node, Laravel, Django, and you find jobs in all these different things. And you don't want to get caught up in tutorial hell where you're just constantly go, oh my God, I got to learn this. Oh my God, I got to learn this. Oh my God, I got to learn this. You pick something, you learn it, you learn your fundamentals and you start building things. You know, my fundamentals course, which are soon being updated to the pro courses, they teach those fundamentals are universal and then you got to decide where you're going to specialize. There's all these different areas you can specialize in. The key is to have those core fundamentals and you take it from there. Most of your learning in your career is going to be at the job, at the job, like so many other careers, so many other professions. Mm. Uh, I still recommend I pick up Java imperative programming over easier to learn declarative programming just to solidify my understanding program before creating a tools or apps. No, no. It's a fallacy that you need to know all these different things. Um, See, when you're building your first apps, especially if you're creating tools and apps for yourself or for a startup, you just want to get the bloody thing out as quickly as possible and make it functional. Um, you know, issues of scale and all this kind of stuff really don't come into it for a while. And if your business is successful, where you need to start concerning yourself with scale, you then you have the financial wherewithals to be able to hire in or learn what it is you need to learn to make it happen for you. So now just, just get your basics out and just start building stuff. Hey, Stefan, could your Pythoners course teach them how to web scrape? Love your work. Well, I'll give you the basics of the language and you understand how to use the language. Once you understand how to use Python, you understand modules. I teach you all this. Then you'll be able to just use the Python scraping modules and you'll be able to implement it. It's just like a formula. You just go tick, 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 and run. So the short answer is yes. Sup, sup, Sergeant. How are you? This is my first week as a web dev, C Sharp. Hey, congratulations, dude. Cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, you know, I did a survey and something like 80% of the people in the audience here are developers, junior or advanced developers. And this is a survey nearly 4,000 people answered. So we have a lot of advanced people or people who already know what they're doing. Uh, remember people, code organization is important. Keep your code neat and clean. Yep. Refactor when you need to. Yep. Like Stefan says, practice makes matter. Focus on your basics. Pivoting becomes easy. Yeah, pretty much. Well says. All right, Scott said it all. We can go now. Stream's over. <laughs> Pro money tip. I just bought a used Miata to replace my alpha with a bad clutch, but use. Let someone else take the depreciation hit. Yeah, that's the thing, Hunter. I had a, um, I sold my Audi, by the way. I sold the Audi, the uh, code in the car car. Love that car, nice car, but it was just becoming uh, too much of a liability for me. And I said, that's it. If I was in 6.2, I would, the Miata would be kind of cool because it's a fun little car. It's not too expensive, but it's super, super reliable and it's a good looking car. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Good looking car. The problem with the German sports cars is like you can be driving, it just stops working. It happened to me uh, one time too many, I just dumped it. Uh, uh, use Django with everything. What's the biggest challenge you ever had to overcome during your career? I think I discussed that. I'm sure some, uh, there, there may have been worse challenges than trying to figure out the use case model for Studio Web, but perhaps it was shocked my psyche so much that I blocked it out of my mind. Um, have you ever heard of Java 17? No, I have not, but it could have be there. Is it normally stuck in debugging an app for months? JavaScript new peer. Whoa, that seems a little bit too long. Mm. See, the problem I saw with modern JavaScript is that they, people got a little bit too tricksy, tricksy for themselves. Too many packages and uh, too many frameworks, too many libraries, 
too many uh, dependencies. One of the golden rules of software development is you don't want to have brittle code. Uh, the JavaScript world became in of itself inherently brittle. Uh, that was a problem for me when I looked at it years ago. I don't know about today, but I still hear it's kind of brittle. What does brittle code mean? It means that you write a piece of code and it's dependent on some third-party library. Somebody decides to update the library and it breaks your application. You're wondering, why is my app breaking, broken now? Well, it's because of some third-party code that was updated improperly or, you know, and you didn't know about it. Yeah, so that's, that's a little bit too long there. Debugging an app for months? Um, it seems like you should get, unless it's a massive app, you should be able to uh, uh, get a debug before that. Uh, always impressed with the quality of your video, not to mention the sound advice you always give. Kudos and thank you. Hey, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Cool. I'm stuck installing JDK 17 on my Linux system. Say chiant. Chiant is a French Canadian term for it pisses him off. Um, yeah, it is. It is. Uh, you figure after all these years, they would have uh, figured out in the Java world to make it easy to install the SDK and configure the class path on your system. But no, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Mm. You know, with Python, you just install the installer, boop, it works. It would PHP, you install it, boop, and there's all these MAMP or WAMP or whatever. It's just simple. Java, they still can't get it. It's unbelievable. Uh, ever thought of doing a live coding stream, demonstrating style coding, IDA preference and such? Uh, have I ever done that? I may have done it in the past. Um, I try to bring to the coding YouTube world something that's not done by other people. So I'm trying to convey my decades of experience. So I talk about these subjects in ways that other people don't talk about, I find. If you want to see somebody live coding, you could check that out. If you want to learn how to code and stuff, I got my courses. You buy me a beer and get my course, and you learn how to code quite well with my interactive system, which is far better than videos. Uh, hey, Stefan, I hope all is well. Which programming language are mostly used in financial services, and how would you rank them from one to three? You know, I, I haven't looked at that in a long time. Well, you know, big banks will probably be using Java or C Sharp. Um, they're probably going to be using a lot of VBA with their spreadsheets in Excel, <laughs> believe it or not. And you might see some JavaScript. So those are, you know, of course, you're going to see uh, programming languages. Yeah, in terms of programming languages. Yeah, so I, my guess is going to be Java, C Sharp, .NET, and VB script for their spreadsheets in Excel. That is a guess. But uh, I know the big banks tend to use Java or .NET quite a bit. Uh, and, of course, they're going to use COBOL. You know, they're going to use COBOL um, to manage all their old mainframes. So that's interesting. Hey, hey, how are you, Paul? I recognize the old faces. C Sharp Legacy. Yeah, well, it's been around for uh, 20 years now. So there's a lot of legacy code. Legacy code just means established apps. Hey, hey, Gabe, how are you? Is your Python course a good course to learn how to use web scrape? I talked about that. You'll learn, once you do my Python course, you'll be able to implement web scraping libraries with ease. Uh, how do you deal with burnout? By pacing yourself, number one. You don't want to be a mad coder and then you burn yourself out. I've done that. Uh, so you don't want to get burnt out. Uh, so you pace yourself, you sleep well, you eat good food, drink lots of water. Uh, avoid sugars and carbs, and that will help you with your burnout. Exercise, exercise, of course, exercise on a regular basis. Hey, Stefan, does it make sense becoming a developer in the Caribbean? Um, I couldn't say. I think being a developer is just a valuable skill anywhere in the world. I don't live in the Caribbean, so I don't have a Caribbean perspective, but why not? I think if you wanted to live in the Caribbean, you could probably, uh, with good interpersonal skills, you could probably write your code on the beach and then uh you know code remotely you know uh, uh this is not true you can succeed in any field freelance just the web coding is the most known and true well there's a lot of opportunity there i noticed that a lot of companies out there are mixing different pro back-end programming languages is there a reason for doing so could be a bunch of different reasons. Could be uh, that they have old legacy code bases and then they finally pulled the trigger to 
implement some aspect of their uh, systems in a different language. So, for example, former student of mine, former Studio Web student, and uh, a guy used to work for me, his startup, which is, uh, they got huge numbers of users on it. Uh, part of it is PHP Laravel and part of it is Node. So the main app is PHP Laravel and they implement Node for a chat feature. So, of course, they could have done it in PHP. So, they, so, but, uh, so it depends. Uh, which do you prefer, being in a university writing some research paper in AI or versus getting a coding job? That depends what you want to do. Like if you want to, um, I would argue if you actually get in a real job as a developer in the commercial, you're going to make a lot more money more quickly. So it depends on your personality. That's more of a personality choice. Hi there. I started learning coding and wanted to know if you have any laptop recommendations. I do. And do I need 16 gig RAM or 8 gig? Okay. So. My recommendation for a coding laptop is 16 gig of RAM, so you can run virtual machines. Um, that's the key. 16 gigs of RAM or more, if you can. 16 gig, that would be fine on a Mac, for example. And you want to have SSD-based um, uh, hard drives. SSD, because you're going to do a, write, a lot of re, a lot of I/O, a lot of reading, writing to disk. And so having r real fast SSDs, SSDs on your laptop will have. Uh, a lot of impact in terms of the performance of your machine. Talking about legacy, what is your opinion about staying 15 years on the same company maintaining systems? VB, classic ASP, say sharp. For what? For the whole period of time, now learning Python, Django, my own. Listen, if it's paying you the bills, you're making the money, and you're saving and investing the money, why not? And if you like the job, you like the workplace, you'll be fine. You know, the key... Once you get into that place of work, guys, is to be sure that you start investing and managing your money properly. Uh, because you'll be making, typically as a developer, multiples of the average job where you happen to live. Um, and when you're making all that extra money, don't make the mistakes. Go out and start buying yourself a BMW or a Porsche or an Audi or something uh, in, in spending all your money like a, like a moron, you, you should you should save, so that in a short period of time you find yourself way ahead of the game financially, and you don't have to worry about work. Uh, okay, uh, for scraping there is beautiful soup and selenium. Okay, yeah, so these are modules, packages, libraries, if you will, in Python that you can just import, and you learn how to do that. I teach you how I teach you about modules in Python in my course. I teach you how to import them, how to use them. I don't specifically teach Selenium Beautiful Soup, but once you understand how modules work, it's really easy. It's like plug and play almost. Uh, uh, I'm on chapter five in your PHP course. Almost there, Uncle Steph. Hey, congratulations, man. That's cool. Good stuff. Did you ever work abroad? I can make a joke. I can make a joke there, but I won't. If so, how did you go about it? I'm a young front-end developer who's working on a low-paying outsourcing company. Not much room to grow. Well, you know, when you're first starting out, um, I assume that way. I assume you're first starting out because you're young. Um, you're gonna have to earn your dues. You're gonna have to work, build some skills. Um, front-end will limit you unless you like really high, do really high-end front-end work. I would always recommend full stack server side to raise your salary. But again, when you're first starting out, you're learning, right? You're learning on the job. You're being paid to learn. So, you know, just keep working and developing your skills and you'll be good. 1990 Miata was my first car. I loved it. Yeah, yeah, great. Like I said, uh, I was thinking of just getting it because it's a nice looking car, super fun to drive, but it's just way too small for me. I was, I was, I was like cramped up like this. Uh, what is this stream for? Uh, we, I covered the topic early on. You can just rewind. All right. How are we doing for time? Okay, 35 minutes. We're going to be wrapping this up. Uh, can I apply for an entry-level back-end dev job even though my front-end skills aren't that good? Sure. I know front-end isn't back-end, but I'm concerned people won't take me seriously if I can't do CSS. Just learn basic CSS. 
just do what you know do my css course you know enough about css to be able to do anything you need to do with css uh, what's your opinion on github copilot devs using people's repositories to train their ai without permission of people who own those repositories yeah i know i covered that in a previous stream um yeah there should have been an opt-in option there i suppose you know uh just feels wrong although if it's anonymous um if it's anonymous I, it's not so bad but yeah, you should allow an opt-in option there learn python first learn java for a new job went back to python for some personal project but now i'm addicted to doing explicit typing in python learn basic java made me a python pro yeah pretty much yeah i really cut my teeth as a developer uh in java world that's for sure made everything else pretty uh, achievable but you can do that with just any language it's just a question of hours writing code i just finished my cs degree congratulations but i would like to specialize in something or some tech what specialization specialization would you recommend should i also pursue a master's on it hmm I don't know what the advantage of getting a master's would be, in all honesty. Uh, what I would do is I think at this point, you should explore what type of programming you want to do, right? For example, C, 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 C++ programming is going to be very different from web stack programming in JavaScript. It's like a totally different game. So I wouldn't be, uh, what's that, 36, yeah. So yeah, I would just explore different options. Uh... I stopped coding for two months. How can I get back into it? Start writing code. My rule is just 20 minutes a day and uh, you'll start picking up your skills very quickly. Uh, hey, Gregory, how are you, man? Hope all is well with you. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to answer a few more questions. I'm off. It's been almost 40 minutes. Wow, time flies. I hear CSS can be a study in itself. Is HTML and CSS a good way to... Oh, is, excuse me. Is HTML and CSS a good way you can do part-time while continuing learning? Also, do you invest in blockchain? We, I have invested in blockchain. Um, I didn't get in early enough when the opportunity presented itself. And that's my bad. Um, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Yeah, HTML and CSS is a good way to start. There's no question. Uh, I'm new to deep web. Uh, are companies in USA, Europe hiring people from third world countries remotely? If you got good English skills, yes. Hey, Uncle Steph, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I hope everything is well with you. All right. I'll ask you questions. I just moved to Canada. Do you recommend your boot camp to a beginner like me? Yes, my boot camp is designed, originally I designed it for absolute beginners, like total nerd noobs, total noobs. But because of the, the, the expanding e, e, or, organic nature of my boot camp, my mentoring program, we also have very advanced people. I have people in the boot camp with 20 plus years experience in development. Uh, a big part of Vita Boot Camp is the coaching sessions. We have bi-weekly coaching sessions. People get on, they ask questions, I answer. We record all these sessions. It's, they're packed full of knowledge, like they're packed full of knowledge. And um, yeah, we what do we have, Matt? You must have like 20 or 30 hours of that. No, more like 30 to 40 hours of these coaching sessions, just exclusive to the group. So yeah, for sure, if you're a total beginner, the mentoring program is fantastic for if you want that support. If you're advanced and you want to learn how to take your skills and turn into freelancing or build a SaaS, again, you, in the mentoring group, we got people like in the same group, we have people who are total beginners, never wrote a line of code. We have people who are super advanced. Some people are freelancing. Some people have got jobs. People come in and out, you know, depending on how busy they are. It's, it's pretty good. It's an evolving group. And I plan on evolving that mentoring program over the next six months quite a bit. I do enjoy it. Do you know anything about blockchain development? I have never done it, so I couldn't say. Hey, Daniel, how are you? Hope everything is good. Uh, what is the fastest way to pick up, up some money coding? Well, yeah, web development, WordPress, Shopify, that kind of stuff. 
why do you not have Glorid or Flexbox in your CS course? Seems like using tables out there. Well, I don't teach tables for uh, CSS. I use something called CSS tables, but that's not table-based design. Um, I am adding Grid and Flexbox to the Pro course soon it's easy though like if you do my css3 course for you to learn grid and flex boss will take you 10 minutes on your own but i'm going to be adding it to my css3 pro pro course if you join my mentoring program you'll get an automatic upgrade if you join any of my my css course or my web dev solo courses you'll get the automatic upgrade as well so don't worry about it good to see you game development advice for college student please uh, eh, wow, that's a big question. I'm going to have to do a, a dedicated course on that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish with David here. If you're a total beginner, you can learn a lot in software support role and then move into dev after that experience. You can, yeah, perhaps, but you can, uh, don't get stuck on being a software support uh, guy. You want to get in there writing code as quickly as possible. And if you're wondering how much you should spend, start with 20 minutes a day, four to five days a week. So there you go. All right, guys, that's it for today's stream. If you're interested in my boot camp mentoring program, take a look below. It will teach you everything you need to know to become a pro developer. And it will even help you with your dating life, interpersonal skills, investing life. <laughs> I know it sounds like a joke, but it's actually true. All right. We'll talk soon.